Hello, everybody, and welcome. Very pleased to see so many in the chat already. And uh, today we're going to be making a paper knife. It's very modernistic, minimal, minimalist, and uh, that's that's it. Simple design, but it's the, the blade is actually turned, so it's it's offset turning. So that's what we're going to be doing, and it's coming from that. So we're minimizing waste and uh, it's a piece of chestnut. It's not the ideal timber for it. It's a little bit soft, but um, but all these problems can be got over. God bless super glue. Okay, let me bring Keith in. He can say hello. Oh no, press the right button does help. Come on. There we are. Hi everybody, hi Andy. Hopefully it's nice and sunny where you all are. It is down here in West Sussex. Yeah, so I'm just muting myself on, on YouTube. That's better. Right. Okay. Good. Yeah, that, yep. uh, the echo is bad, isn't it? It is. Yeah. No, it's a gorgeous yeah. sunny day here. And, uh, and it's uh, it's really very, very nice indeed. So, And there's getting a bit of warmth in it as well now, which is which is good. So I suppose without further ado, I'll put you in the background, Keith. And uh, if you can tell me who's in, I'll get set yep. up to uh, just to make a start. Let you. Are you going to talk about it first, or just going to grab? Um, I'll, I'll just explain very quickly how I'm going to do it, and then I shall get on and do it while you while you introduce everybody. Mm -hmm. So if we change camera to that one, there we are. The the system I'm using to to hold it is 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 brought about by the shape of it because it it becomes very weak. At this this bottom end the pointy end so you have to make sure that the bit that's holding the bottom end is supported properly so therefore it's going to be screwed oh i'll get it in the camera in a minute obviously if initially it's screwed in the middle and then we'll swap to the two sides exactly the same on the other end so that um we've got an offset which is parallel to the to the bed if that makes sense Okay, I'll I'll get this set up. I'd leave you to tell me who's in, Keith. Right, I'll go over and uh, see if I can get the participants list off of YouTube, which isn't very many at the moment. So, um, according to this, you're in watching what you're doing and talking to yourself. Absolutely. So, followed by Brent Bowcroft, Doug Miller at Wood Spun Round. The Curly Turner Duncan, Gav Sadei, Gerard the French Turner, Ian Leonard, Lawrence Bagasia, Pete Cochran, and Robert Dolman. And I know there's a few more in there. Let me get out of that because I've seen a few different names in there. So if you get called out a second time, apologies, but uh, we're sort of on it. <coughs> I know Alison's in the background somewhere, but she's getting ready to go out. And Alison is uh, Andy's wife. We've got John S. Casting. Um, Chris Dodds from Down Under. Hello, Chris. Welcome. Thanks for stopping up or getting up early, whichever it is. Um, Terry Hooper. Terry is another club member, along with um, Pete Cochran and myself and Andy. We all belong to West Sussex Woodturners. Robert Dolman, I'm not sure whether you've got been called before, but you've got called this time. Uh, you've been chatting, you guys, if nothing else. <laughs> Karen Dolman's in. Hello, Karen. And that's the end of the list that I've got. So welcome, everybody. Let's have a little bit of a laugh. Uh, this is you might not get a lot out of Andy while he's turning because he's got to uh, got to concentrate on what he's doing because of the uh, delicacy of this. And I've been informed that a lot of it is going to be 
um, spindle gouge rather than a skew, but he's going to finish it up with a skew to save on sanding. So if there's anyone has got a question for either Andy or myself, specifically Andy as it's his show, um, put a couple of question marks in or question prior to it so that we can we can see it. Uh, we've got our second Aussie in. Hello, Robbo. Good day, mate. Robbo Robin. <laughs> Hello, Robbo. Yep. Very pleased to see you. Uh, Chris okay. is saying he's staying up because it's five past ten where he is All in right. Oz. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Hmm. Okay. Is that, are you, you about there, aren't you, I think? Yeah, if you wanted yep. to pull the camera slightly forward to you. Uh, it's this one, isn't it? Yep. Get rid of the light in the bottom of it. If it will. Yep. Yep. It's that one. That's whoop. That's better. So you're watching a little bit behind where I'm doing it. Okay. Yeah, I'm on, uh, <laughs> I'm on YouTube at the moment. So, right, I'm back on the back on Streamyard. Right. Okay. So this is uh, this is the setup. It's uh, the Axminster um, live centre that comes with with five different um, bits that go in the end, and this one's like a mini faceplate um, that I've, I'm using for this because I want to support that bottom end. The other end, I've just got simply a homemade um, piece of timber that fits into the F jaws, which I've only just purchased. So almost first time out. And that will that will give me good support um, at all times. And I need it sometimes. I've got to wear this good support. Mm. Right, okay. Let's get this. Relatively straight grain piece of wood that you've got there, Andy. It is. And it's, it's not too bad. It's a, it's a piece of chestnut. Sweet sweet chestnut. Sweet rather chestnut than will horse. Be, yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Rather no horse, horse chestnuts chestnut. too too um, fibrous, too isn't it? Good. Oh, I don't need that. I'm going to use the roughing roughing gouge for this. You, okay. should, you should have seen the casualty, Robbo. Robbo just said it looks like a slaughterhouse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. Um, I had a slight accident with a, 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 a can of red dye. A bit unfortunate, but um, there we are. That's the way it goes, isn't it? Could have been okay. any other colour. <laughs> yeah. Right. Hodge is in for the looks of it. Hodge, Hodge. Yeah, Hodge is in. Robert, good afternoon to you, mate. go a little bit shorter than that got to bear in mind the fact that there are screws inside here holding this on so I've got to make sure I miss them that is a good idea oh Terry's going to feed himself bloody hell Terry you're always doing that bring it with you we won't worry about it we can't see you to get to about 20 mil or thereabouts 22 mil uh, which is set up there so yeah a little bit further but not much
We've got 28 in at the moment, Andy, watching you. Good. And that's just got for a week. Purpose in has just joined us as well. For a weekday lunchtime, that's... that's yeah, that's it's evening where Sid is, so... Because he, he's America, Australia as well, isn't he? Oh, yeah, right. Hmm. Right, those are just to give me a bit of guidance. They, the, the, the bit up this end will be the, the handle. This will be the blade. And uh, I don't want to come beyond that on the on the uh, taper. So let's get that down. Yeah, Sid saying he's an Aussie. Really quite pleasant when you've just sharpened your tools, isn't it? Certainly makes a difference. So I should take this down to about six or eight mil at the end, um, but then in fact I will not make it shaped for the for the first fifteen mil probably. Um, just to leave a bit of strength there, because that's where it will fall apart, given half a chance. The handle itself wants to be shaped a little bit more than it is. But very little more. You can I'll finish like that almost to a sand now, can't you? Very nearly, oh. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just like to have a slight shape on the handle. Mm. Looks as though looks as though you tried, didn't it? Sweet chestnut is quite a quite an aggressive wood on the tools. Yes. So um, it won't take long to take an edge off. Um, this a bit like th ash. There are two sort of really important parts of of doing one of these, and this intersection between the blade and the handle is one of them because if you don't take this down far enough it looks a real mess it's got to go down basically it's got to go down to the thickness of the blade which of course you can't see at the moment but it's going to be somewhere around six mil so immediately i'm putting a weakness into it but you have to have it there really to tell you where to stop I can always take a bit more out later, but uh, that's not too bad. And because I said I was going to. Now this will all be parallel offset turning rather than yes. um, offset turning with different centers at either end. Yeah, so instead uh, of having instead of having a bit of it jiggling about, you've got the whole lot jiggling about, mm. basically. <laughs> Just try and straighten this up a bit. It it needs to be fairly accurate because this is going to give us the basis for the for the blade. That's as far as I'm going with that. Just get rid of the fluff. Right, so I'm going to sand that because I can finish the handle effectively. I've got to round the top over. The blade, I want to sand it to get the, a nice straight edge to the blade. 
I shall then mark where the edge of the blade is coming and I'm going to harden it with a bit of super glue just so that it, it strengthens it up where the edge is going to be because otherwise it will crumble with this with this timber but it takes quite a nice edge <coughs> excuse me now let's do that top before we go any further I don't, don't want to go any more than that. Okay, move that out of the way. Quick sand. I'm not going to go too far with it. Oh, well. Uh, I'll start off with 120 because it's actually not too bad, so. Extract that. tend to forget I've got one yeah hear it as it fires up then it uh, goes down in volume yes yeah amazing these microphones aren't they they are good they are good but while Andy's sanding this a little bit and the handle to perfection we've been talking about this earlier on we well we've been talking about it for three or four days as to what his design was going to be and as it's going to be minimalistic um straight lines there's no reason why if you wanted to do something with a more decorative handle you couldn't you could do as well so but andy likes the straight lines the minimalistic style i quite like it as well but if you wanted to put a couple of beads or a bead in a cove or some small detail onto the handle don't forget that that is the bit that's going to be handled so it's got to feel nice in your hand in your fingers yeah. If it doesn't feel nice, you won't use it. You'll nope. use it in the garden as a dibber, not what no, it's meant for as a letter opener. So yep. um, we're deliberately keeping the, uh, or Andy's deliberately keeping it it's fairly mi minimalistic. Yep. And I've made the handle as short as I think it can conceivably be to give the, the maximum blade um, because there's nothing getting in the way. It, it doesn't make it difficult to use which is the other consideration. Hmm. I should just do this for 400. Brent's escaping. He's going to process the balance of Sycamore that he uh, thieved from somewhere the other day. <laughs> Very oh, no. nice too. Yeah, didn't thieve it. He caught it. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Brent. See you later, mate. Have fun with it. Don't forget to seal it if it's... Uh, if it's new or fresh cut. Yep, in seal it or whatever. Yep. Ian right. in the shed is in now. Hello, right, Ian. Ian. Even if you only put PVA on it, it's uh, it's worth <laughs> oh, yeah. doing. Yeah, definitely. It's worth doing. Right, so just a little bit of um, CA glue. I don't like using this in this way, but it does strengthen the timber, bonds it together a bit. That's it. And that won't take long to go off today. Right, no time at all. Yeah. Just to make question, sure. Question from Gerard. Keith mm -hmm. is... Is dead elm okay to turn? Yes. Yeah, definitely. No problem Remember at all with it. Depending really? where you've got it from, Gerard, there might be a little bit of um, oh Dutch elm disease in it, which manifests as little black spots. It doesn't weaken the turning. It doesn't weaken the wood. It turns well, and it's actually quite decorative as well. Yeah. Oh, it is. Yeah. I remember when I was teaching woodwork, we had a an elm tree taken from the site um, down at the Weald, in fact, near you, mm -hmm. Keith. 
and uh, came on the side of the A29. And uh, we had a lot of planks from that, and they were very nice too. Yes, yeah. I had quite a bit. You might want to take your key out, Andy. Yep, you're absolutely um, right. I had quite a bit from Brighton down on the south coast when they cleared one of their big parks because some of the elm down there got uh, or was supposedly was some, dangerous. There was some it lovely stuff around, wasn't there? Yeah, yeah, it wasn't as dangerous as what they were making out, but uh, they donated some to me. Oh, very nice. Did they, they realise? Yeah. No, not at the time. I have a hundred-year-old elm from the Narracorti Caves Conservation Park. All right. That should look nice. It's got some nice colour elm, and it can That's be gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah, it can be from cream right the way through to a fairly deep purple, pink. <laughs> Well, I've just numbered the um, the holes in the end of this blank. Sorry, Keith, just for a moment. Um, yeah, hold it one, up to one, the camera, then we can see. Oh, yeah, I'm forgetting where the camera is. It's a long period. One isn't it? Yeah. That's yeah. It. So I've numbered it where I can see it actually when it's spinning. So that's number two. That's number one. The middle one I don't need to number, and and I've taken the opposite, of the, the the same corner I should say, and it's number two on on this end. I'm going into number one at the moment. Number one, both ends. So Gerard's saying they cut a lot of dead elm on the back of the men's shed. Got a good few four inch. Mm, there was a lot of it around at that yeah. time. It was it's actually a lot of noise it? Going, going cut bigger. That's it. About half a 12 inch round. Well, that's a good size. Yeah, nice. It's a good size. You don't want to go fantastically big although it's always nice to do the big bowls um, a 12 inch fruit bowl is uh, a good size it is yeah right this is where it gets exciting this is not bending yet when i tighten that but when when we when, when i've done this side and turned up do number two it will bend which is why you necessarily have that screw there actually holding it in place. That's the Robbo's, only reason I've done that system. Yeah, Robbo slung a question in. What tailstock centre is this, Andy? It came from Axminster. I don't, I don't know what they call it. It's, it's a live centre and it has... A live multi-point centre, if I remember yeah, right. Yeah, that's right. It has five bits of gubbins that go in. Can you see those? Yeah. So that's a sort of a, a cup one there. Um, that one is a, a ring centre. That one's just a pointy bit, and that's a bigger pointy bit. And then the one I've got in there, which is which is like a faceplate. It's got a uh, faceplate, yeah. Got two, three screw holes, I think. But I, I put one down through the middle for this, obviously. Mm -hmm. But uh, but yeah, it's it's a very useful little gadget. I've I've used it no end since I've had it. All right, we've got Fred Gilliver just popped in. Saying hello to everyone and you and myself. Yeah, that's right. So this is where it gets exciting now. It's what we've all paid our money to see. Yeah, go on, Andy. Sorry. So we've got this. Is what we've had all our, all paid our money to see, isn't it? The exciting. Yeah, thing. the yeah uh, the dancing so wood. Yep. So yeah, Gerard's saying he can only turn twelve inches with his midi lathe, so it's no good. Trying to get 13 inch bowl blanks, is it? No. <laughs> no, no not, not much point, no. It doesn't work. <laughs> right, Robbo, here we go. Uh, I don't know whether Sorry. you can get on to Axminster Power Tools um, website. It's a UK based website and power tool supplier for us. That's where it came from. Um, they you should be able to. They have stockets all over the place, don't they? I don't, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, only, got any only in Australia. UK. No, I don't oh, think is, is we it, go down no. under. Right, okay. I know they they, they do export some stuff, but I, I've don't, no idea where to. I, I've never had to find out, really. No. Right, okay. Sid's replying to Robbo that he thinks he's seen that at uh, Carbotech today when he was in there about uh, $170. There is actually another cheaper version of those as well, which I have here. Just put 
notes down there, which which was on 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 the internet. It kept coming up. You recognise it because you see the blue the blue bit. It's a red arrow bit. That's a live centre, and in it will go. There's, a, there's sort of like a well, almost a step without the without the point. I don't know what you saw sawtooth centre or something. And then you've got a, a pointy bit. That's actually in two pieces. I've banged it in there. I can't get it back out again. But that was why I bought it, because I wanted a longer point. Um, that's just a sort of extension piece. That's a ring center, and that's a, a sort of cup center. But it was very cheap. But it's done what I, what I, what I bought it for, so I can't complain. But it's sort of surprising how much stuff there is around, isn't it? Really? Yeah. Well, right. So once so one manufacturer makes it, others man, uh, others sort of yeah. jump yeah. on the bandwagon. That's right. But you shouldn't Sorry. have any problem, Robbo. The thing I haven't done. Where's my pencil gone? There it is. The thing I haven't done is to um, mark out exactly where the edges of the blade are going to come to, because I do like to do that. So let's get this set up. Uh, nope. Let's go around to nine. Six, seven, eight, nine. So I'm using the indexing system on the lathe just to make sure I do get them opposite each other. But it's actually got to be in line with the two opposite corners, but not the ones that are numbered. So that should be near enough it. It won't be exact. So that's one edge. And then take this out and go to uh, 18 plus nine is 27. 30, 27 just there. That should, oh, if I lift the look, this the, the, the tool rest up a bit. That's in line with that. So it's just there. That should give me a guide. Just all I can ask of it. Okay, disengage that. Oh, not that far. It's better. Right, okay, so here we go. I've deliberately left all these lumps on the end because I'm screwing through. It's a 9 mil offset on the holes and if I didn't leave all this on I think it would just fall apart basically so it's just to give it a bit of strength a bit of stability and then here we go nice and very 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 gently not that gently actually I think I might I've got to try and watch the horizon. I yeah, no, that's fine. It, so. Is that all right? It's going to bleach it out for us, but... Uh, I do need to be able to see that. Yeah, you need to see more than what we do. It's surprising how quickly you get there doing this. It's not much timber to take off. Too expensive to uh, take too much off. Yeah. In fact, that end is there virtually. It's on the yeah. line there. But there's quite a bit more to come off up here. So nice and gently. And I think that centre is going to be somewhere near the right thickness. We'll find out in a bit. I'm going to go the wrong way. Uphill. Stop and start quite a bit. Yeah, that's getting there. It's not there yet, but uh, I might have to take that down a little bit more. But we'll see later on. This is where it comes in handy that you can uh, use the tool with both hands rather than only be left or right handed. Yes, I found that very handy many, many times. Mm, yeah, so have I.
I shan't be using the skew on this. Promise you I won't. Mm -hmm. That's that's getting quite close. I don't know if you can see the line on there. Can you? No, probably not. No, no. no. It's 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 very nearly there. That's that's about a cup a millimeter and a half down mm -hmm. to here, and then it's nearly on the line there. So see and that's actually. It's, oh, yeah, you can see good, it at the bottom there. It's pretty much the same, yeah. both sides, which is very yeah. reassuring. Just about, <laughs> just about to fix it up. Good, good. Okay, doke. Right, let's get that down to the line. A bit faster, I think. Makes it more exciting. And stop there, regardless of what it's doing to that uh, joint. That what's, what's the word I'm looking for? Intersection. Oh, that's looking. This is this is going very well. This one. They do vary. Quiet. Quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, didn't mean to. Tempting providence. Yeah, fate. Frequently. Yeah. There's one thing about this being such a soft timber. It's very, very easy to sand. So I should do most of the sanding by hand now. It's not worth trying to do it when it's spinning. It's, uh, it's dangerous. That's really the only way you could do it would be on a block of wood anyway. Yeah, and, and there's so much air going past. It, it's not, you yeah. know, I, had, I did try it, and it's not worth it. No. It really isn't. So I've just got a little got bit more in the middle. Got Adam popped in now to see you. I love Adam. Thank oh, you, hello, mate. Adam. Yes, he likes this sort of stuff. Mm. He likes offset stuff. And you've got 26 watching at the moment. Excellent. I'm just amazed at how many people watch it when they get in from work as well. Because yeah, the numbers suddenly shoot through the yeah. roof, don't they? Yeah. yeah. Which is nice. But it's nice to have three Aussies in as well. It is, yeah, that's lovely. To be bit appreciated of a still, the other side of the world. Bit of a line still showing this side, nothing that side, which means I've got my line slightly in the wrong place, but hey, mm. it's very close. It is really is almost doing it by eye. But you have to move the tool rest. Because it's a different hole. That's better. That's lovely. Ian's, Ian's just saying that he's looked on the Axminster website and those tailstock centres look good. I've not, he's not seen them before either. All oh, right, yeah, they're very useful. I bought those fairly early on with my in my wood turning career, and I've used them no end. Just enables to do things that can be tricky otherwise. I think that's as far as that side is going. Mm -hmm. Quick, a quick sand down. What should we do? One eighty. And a bit of sponge, a bit of core coming. I just I find this helps to give me some sort of control over it. Look at those marks all disappearing, because obviously this is chattering a little bit. Mm. It would do. It's so thin. But well, they barely got six minutes to uh, support that. The, the marks disappear very, very quickly. A little bit of 180. I'm not going to take it too far like this because so uh, I can do this afterwards. But just to show that you can get a good finish on it and very quickly like that. Right, okay, other side. I have to remember to get this because this this is on a on a, a more a, a taper. Mm -hmm. So you have to just free it. But of course it won't free anywhere all the time it's locked in. That's it. I'll do it. Yep. It's nice having shiny, shiny F jaws, isn't it? Yeah, you'll find they're really useful, Andy. Well, I do anyway. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, they've certainly come in handy on this job because they mm. keeps them out of the out of the way. Yeah. I use them for 80% of my turning, I think. Yeah. And I've got the ring centre as well. The face, the ring plate. Ring the face yeah. plate, yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah. 
I've got that as well for it. So, uh, right, number two, which is that one. Do the other side. Sorry, it's a bit, a bit, a little bit tedious for those of you watching. But uh, well, we can hear the work going on. Sorry, yes, I'm out of sight completely. Aren't I? Yeah, don't worry about it. Oop. That's better. That's frightening. Yeah. There we are. <laughs> Look at that. Pays, cost me a lot of money, that has. <laughs> right. Good. Is that? Right, back onto the lathe. What do I have? Headstock one, wasn't it, I think? Yeah. That's the one, yeah. Yep. Now that little, they effectively a tenon on the end of there works extremely well with this F jaws. Mm, yeah, they've got the angles. internal. Yeah, they've got the internal angle. The angle's about yeah. right, and it was just a piece of old timber I kicking about, so it's, uh, it works really quite nicely. And the orientation doesn't matter with this this one. I know often with offset turning it does. But not this one because it's running in line with the the bed right now then we can probably i'll just tighten that up and i can take that out so i don't forget it we can probably see that bending a bit no nope. oh yes a little bit i don't you probably flexing can't see it bit, yeah it's flexing a bit so yeah. basically all i do is just nip it just yeah there leave it so when you're going to fire the lathe up now you really want to be on the lower Slow speed, speed yeah. and then Slow ramp speed. it up to uh, yeah. the yeah. running speed yeah. otherwise it's not if too you bad yeah you start it you can end up um you tearing you the whole thing out yeah. yeah it's not too bad in that there's still reasonable thickness there but of course that's going to be going now the live center is cool it's part of a an axminster multi live center adam um, further up the chat, that someone's put some details in of it. Um, yeah, I haven't got. It's about eighty-three pound, I believe. Was the it's a multi-head like yeah. live revolving centre and additional tips That's from it. Axminster, and it's yeah. 80, eighty-three pound, I believe. And they do it in one or two more's taper. And very, other, very useful it is too. Other manufacturers make them as well. Uh, yeah, you can get cheap imitations. That that one I showed you in the yellow box. That that's a very yeah. much a cheap imitation. It's not as good. It gave me a long center. Um, if you're doing a candlestick, for example, you want a long center to go into the candle hole and allow you to deal with the end of the, the top of the candlestick. Yeah, and that just turning, allows you yeah. to do that. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, right here we go then. Douglas Mungham's dropped in. Afternoon, Andy Keith, and all the rest of the rabble in. Hello, hello, Douglas. Douglas. Turn this what's about 13, 1,350 revs. It yeah, could go so a bit quicker. The, what's the excuse for being late, Douglas? Yeah. And we're the cakes. Yeah. We had a, we had a quick sleep after lunch, I know. Eighty-three euros, not pounds. Sorry, Gerard. I haven't got my glasses on and it's only running up small, the comments. I don't think I can get them. Uh, and what the exchange nice. rate is these days? No. No. That's better. I've got a slightly bigger bigger print now. Russ Olden's getting old. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. My size is bloody new. Yeah, it, it's terrible. Yeah. Oh, no, that's all looking, looking good. It's coming on well. Really, really gently tickling it, really. This is where you need to use your finger as a guide up against the tool rest. Absolutely. Yeah, Terry's back in. Yeah, you wouldn't want to suddenly, suddenly dig into it because it will, it will dig in. I'll let it fly across the workshop. You don't really want anything that sharp, and uh, I know it's not very really heavy. Really but, uh, no, it's not heavy. No, it's not heavy, but you don't want, don't want to end up wearing it. 
no. Right, that's, yeah, we're getting there. I'll do a bit up this end, I think, coming the wrong way. What word are we using for this? This is sweet chestnut. chestnut. Yep. Not horse chestnut, sweet chestnut. It's the same as the chestnut paling fences that we have over here. So it's fairly rot proof, although this is a bit punky down one end. Little bits, yeah, a bit punky yeah. down that end, and a little bit stringy, but it's it's not bad. It finishes quite nicely. Mm. Well, I mean, it's used for furniture, isn't it? So uh, yeah, well, you, that's where you can put a lot of cuts in. These were off cuts from a furniture factory, I believe. Yeah. Douglas is suggesting everyone presses the thumbs up. Or the thumbs down, whichever you like. If you don't like it, it's thumbs down. Doesn't yep, make any that's... difference to Andy or myself what you press as long as you <clears throat> recognize it. And if you go on to, if you're new on here, um, can you subscribe to him? And if you hit the bell to the right of the subscribe button, you will be notified of every live event that uh, Andy does, every live broadcast. And Terry, this was this started off as 30 mil square. The handle maximum is 22 mil, tapering to about 19, 18, yeah, 19 like mil. Yeah. And what was it? the offset is about nine Not, mil. Nine mil, yeah. As near as I could get it. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> well, that's coming. That's shaping up quite nicely. So. I did actually remember to slow it down before I turned it on that time. I guess he's nearly there. This is the, the, I've done a number of these in the past, and this is coming out as, as good as any I've ever done. In the, It's very similar that side to that, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is reassuring. close isn't it it's not far off yeah i've got about a millimeter or so uh-huh yeah, i'll take a bit more Just a little bit there and there, yep. It's on this side, so that's good. It really is attention to detail on this. No, still Douglas is asking me what is the difference between horse and sweet chestnut when it's stringiness <laughs> when it comes to turning. Sweet chestnut is very rot resistant and stringy and quite a stable horse timber. Chestnut. Yeah, oh, sweet um, chestnut. yeah horse yeah. chestnut yeah. is. And sweet. No, horse chestnut is the white one, which is the soft one. <laughs> it's the stringy one, yeah. Yeah, yeah and not re it turns nice. You can get sporting in it. And the sweet chestnut that Andy's using today is what they make chestnut paling fencing out of and carcass um, furniture out of. I've just got they both turn there. well. They both turn well. They both finish well. I've never tried turning horse chestnut. I should have to get some one day. Yeah, they the open bills, Chris. That's not a problem. 
we don't get a lot of mail but uh, it's always useful to have you can use it as a as a folder for um, creasing paper as well my aunt used to open all her letters with them with one mm. of these and she kept them all in their envelopes bills and letters when, when we sorted everything out after she died mm -hmm. it was it's awful yeah <laughs> nightmare yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah but absolutely everything was still in its original envelope beautifully opened of course mm. i think that is about that for that bit you can you can see how much it's moving now yeah it's quite a flex to it isn't it yeah yeah you got all the vibration marks there but that's all right don't mind that okay i'm going to take a little bit more out of that when i've got it off but i put it back onto the center just to uh to sort that out and um and that i will send sand that off so i'll, I'll cut it through with the bandsaw or whatever either end and uh and then so you're, you're only going to be cutting off or sanding the last what three quarters of an inch to an inch if that well this bit here yeah do you, do you mean, yes yeah about that yeah it's about 15 but i mean I'll, I'll i'll take it off a little bit more just to give me a bit of room but um mm -hmm. it, it, it's not going to grow much so right okay that's the next job is is to go back to sand sand it and then go back, back to center to, yep Oh yes, Sandy. That's probably a good idea. Yeah. So right, I don't want to undo that. Let's take that off for a minute. Is there any trouble with that long tool rest? It does get in the way, doesn't it? Yeah. Right then. Here we go. Oh, I've lost a bit. Oh, there it is. The bit I wanted. Right. This is the bit we're doing. Yeah. Not too much pressure now. Nope. And on something this thin, you might find that it's better to lock the headstock up and put your finger underneath just to take the weight and the bounce out of the wood. Yes, yeah, because it's rounded, it's quite useful to be able to turn it. So yeah, I'm hoping, yeah. I'm, hoping I, I, I'm getting away with it, so that's all right. It's because it does give you the shape. But um, <laughs> That's coming up quite well. No, well. You're in for 50 minutes almost, mate. So yeah, you really? Doesn't time fly You're doing well on time. time, so there's no yep. panic. Yep. No, we're all right because I mean, the sanding doesn't take many, many minutes. A little bit there that wasn't quite sharp, which is now. Yes, it sands so easily. This it's really nice. No, that's 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 a good edge along there. Okay, not quite looking at a knife edge, but you don't want a blunt edge. It's 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 quite um. It's quite oh, sharp, but uh, yeah, sharp, yeah, but sharp enough. Let's yeah, that way. right. Okay, here we go. This is where I take it off, put it on back on the middle just to tidy everything up. Where's the hole? There it is. That's it. I remembered. <laughs> yeah, and it's not going to be that sharp, Douglas, to shave with. Not quite. No. Is that nowhere near? <laughs> it'll make a good back scratcher. And the fact that I, I treated it with CA glue is going to help. Hmm. Not that there's going to be a lot left, on the, I wouldn't think now. Not a great deal, but I think it's it soaks in enough. It was the thin one. Hmm. So it soaks in enough to just, just get below the surface a bit. Yeah, Baz has just dropped in. Real simple things. Hi, Baz. Lunchtime. Because basically I haven't taken anything off those two edges. They're still as they were when I put the CA glue on. So there should be, should be a slightly dark line down them then. Where your pencil there was, was there was i think it, it, there was it just where i've come over i think i've just taken that just edge taken off. It off right that, you want to go fraction. to overhead again now mate oh yeah that's probably a good idea isn't it that's it 
this is where you you, you don't want to over tighten it the fact that it's all in line now does help yeah. but it's still it's still very fragile down that end okay, yeah there's so. not going to be a lot done chris on shaping it it's just going to just define the transition between the blade and the handle. transition that's the word that's the one i was looking for <laughs> JP's in. Hi, Jamie. How are you, mate? Thanks for popping Hello, over Jamie. to see us all. Yeah. Lost down in the sticks in West Sussex, you know, we feel a bit neglected sometimes. Yeah, outnumbered <laughs> by several of them. <laughs> right, so we'll just take a little bit off off there just to make that a little bit deeper. Not Not much. really is chattering and wobbling around a bit but yeah <laughs> see the vibration a bit now i can probably get the rest of that with glass paper i suspect mm -hmm. let's just see how that's looking oh, slight splinter there no that's nice i like to have that the back edge of the blade slightly wider than the handle i think it just looks nicer mm -hmm. but, um, and Jamie's just uh, he's just hit 8K on uh, his YouTube. So well done on that, mate. Oh, well done, yeah. yeah. <laughs> good. Good, good. Right, take it all off here. And then I'll take the chuck off, put my sanding disc on. I've got a very small five inch sanding disc, which is adequate for this. I've got a a 10 inch sander over there but in the infinite wisdom prox on put a lip all the way around the outside so you can't get something like this onto the edge of the edge of the um sanding disc uh -huh. uh, no, that one wasn't it yeah no you can't quite see it but oh that's the wrong one what's going on here that's better. Yes, there it is, the sand, the sander there. All right, yeah. If I turn the lights off, it would probably help. That's better. Um, but you, it's got a lip around the outside, which means you can't get on from the side to just do the tip, which is a real pain. And one day I might change it. Cut a bit away. I think we have but, the uh, technology to take a lamp off, haven't we? Yeah, absolutely. It's only plastic, so... Yeah, you don't need all of it, do you? Only the bottom bit. That's right, yeah, yeah. Brian's nice, just crept in as well. Uh -huh, been hello, lurking Brian. in the background. <laughs> hello, Brian. He's been out in his tractor this morning and levelling the ground out. So you can go out in the mower later on. Pete's saying turn it off. Well, I don't think you're... There's a lot of chance of that, Pete. There's only about two mil by six mil stub left on there. Yeah, and you can't support it. It's um, it's it comes a bit difficult. I was going to say I'm going to do it on the bandsaw, but yeah, you can't fill the it. bandsaw up with tut. <laughs> well, I'm in the process of hanging my mask on the wall, um, because I thought it looked pretty up there, but um. Ryan yeah. reckons he never creeps anywhere. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Plug it in. It's plugged in. Ah. Uh, yes, it's plugged in. What's the matter with it? Oh, yes, the light's on now. The plug wasn't right in, I think. Ah. Uh,
Well, all that just for that. Right, so sanding disc is down here. Do you want to go overhead now? Yep, I will do. Just sort of getting everything together. Mm -hmm. uh, overhead that one. Or well, we might even go tail stop, we'll see. This was a sanding disc I made for my, my old lathe, which had an inch uh, thread on. on the, so I had to buy an adapter for it. But it does the job. I don't want a table, because I think a table could be dangerous, putting something this yeah. thin. Get caught down there it, quite easy, wouldn't it? Yeah. Gets dragged down, yeah, and I don't want to do that. Right, so that's there. Start the do flicker. Oh, ouch. Um, feel it. I need all that lot. Maybe jump. <laughs> Stop it. So you've got 34 in, and you've been running 56 minutes, mate. All oh, right, so we've just fractured over the hour. That's not bad. Yeah, yeah, but not we're not, it's not all. critical for the hour. No. Lunch times, it's however long it takes. All right, I shall finish this by hand, because inevitably when you're doing this, you catch it up here. Yeah. You see it flexing as you're sanding yeah, it. It's, oh, it's bending all over the place. It's, it's lovely. And that, broadly speaking, is it. Oh, no, I've got the other the end to do yet. No. Nope, I just, just realised that. Hey-ho. It's close. Mm. Actually, I'll take the worst off on the sander over here for a minute. Right, that's that's absolutely fine for me. And then my usual trick is to finish it. With that. With the wee bracks. That's with the, um, the glass paper on top. Right. Just to make it nice and soft. And then doing that, it takes up the shape. Hmm. You get rid of all those marks left by the sander. This bit hasn't got quite the same grain pattern as the other bit. It was quite nice, the other one of the other bits. Yeah, you can't see it. The light's bleaching it out. No, it's too, too bright, yeah. Yeah. So I'm putting it off now. No, there's a, there's no. a sort of a fleck in there. But all you right. Can't, you can't, yeah, you can't no, see can't, it. can't see but, it. Um, but anyway, that's that's that. Obviously, I need to do all of this again, particularly down here where, where it just caught the edge of the sanding disc. Which it nearly which always should, does. Yeah. yeah. Which I should do at my leisure. And then I'll spray it, give it a spray of um, sanding sealant, cellulose probably, and maybe an acrylic lacquer on top mm -hmm. or whatever, vice versa. Uh, well, melamine even. Melamine actually is probably quite good because it's, it's hard wearing. Yeah. 
So, uh, so I made people I've, picking having, it up. So, having it just had the delivery, having just had the delivery from Chest Chestnut this morning. In fact, oh, right. I thought twenty minutes before we went on air, um, I might try try some of the spray. I've got the melamine in a can, but I've tried the spray stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm sure, it'll be wonderful. So that's it, folks. Any questions we haven't addressed? I don't suppose there are. But, uh, I well, think get, we've. Let me get Keith back in. Oh, I can sit myself down. Yeah, I think we've covered them all. Apologies if we've missed any. If we have missed any, it's only because you haven't put them back in again. There we are. Uh, Good. A nice, simple, but a simple, technical. As I said, simple, yeah. but it's, it's not simple if you go at it like a bullet a gate, because it no. will break. I can guarantee it will break. And I'll make a confession. I did actually have one broke. I was doing the, the first bit of offset turning and it lost the end. Mm. But it happens. And it, that was how I learned about how soft this timber was, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. It's the first, first time I've turned chestnut. You know, I had no idea at all. But um, but no, it, it's nice. It's got it's got a nice feel to it. I've, I've lacquered that one. It just wants a bit of buffing now and uh, sorted out, finally finalized. But it's, it's it feels strong enough to do the job. Mm hmm. Yeah, you can very... use uh, many other timbers as well. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. A close-grained, harder timber would probably be easier. Yes. But yes. Um, I wanted the light colour and, and the sort of minimalist look, basically, is what we've been going for all the way along on this one. Mm. And I think I think we've achieved that. You know, I think you don't get much more minimalist than, than that. No. Well, you've got some nice comments in there. Well done. Good. Very nice. Nice Thank letter opener, much. nice one, guys. Thank you very much, everybody. I shall look at those well, as soon as we finish, really. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nice one, nice one. Beauty, mate, from down under. So thanks, guys, for stopping by to uh, oh, that's not bad. keep Andy 30, and myself comfortable and chatting. 30 people, 30 people watching, 28 thumbs up. Yeah, that's, that's a good. That's not uh, bad. That's not bad that at is, all. That is very good. That well, thank is very you very good. much. Thank you very much, everybody. That I really appreciate that. So hopefully you've all subscribed and you've hit the uh, notification bell. All that does is just uh, lets YouTube know that uh, you like watching the stuff that Andy puts out, and you will then be um, advised when anything comes on similar nature yep so um yep. andy's on again next tuesday, next tuesday. afternoon the tuesday, yeah and the following tuesday he's got three on the bounce yep it's just how it's worked out i'm not on until the sixth which is the thursday i'm covering for scott so this thursday you've got scott hopefully he's uh Meds have kicked in because he's been having a little bit of a tough time. So hopefully they've kicked in. Um, I'm going to be Andy's making doing next Tuesday. I'm doing next th uh, next Thursday, and then Andy's doing the following Tuesday. So. I'm going to be making something out of that, Keith. I'm not quite sure what yet, and it probably won't be all of it. <laughs> but, um, but that's one of the pieces you you gave me. Oh, a bit of that uh, Aussie wood. Yeah, um, oh, I can't remember the name of it, but yeah, that one. <laughs> It's a sort of, I don't, I don't think it's the tiki one. I think it's the other one. Yeah, it's, is that the Mar Maribel? Not sure. No, I can't remember. I'll, I'll try and look it up and see if I can find out before next week. Yeah. But, um, but that's that's what I'm hoping to do. It may just be a, a sort of a Grecian urn style bud vase. Terry, so no, it's... Scott hasn't finished his solitaire board because he was taken sick on saturday sunday when he was going to drop in to do it so that's still waiting to be done robo saying it's not maribel so okay if it's um, not maribel there was a something uh, started with ik wasn't there um let's see if i can find it because you sent it to me on messenger so we've got mal malagai or amboina it's the it's one of those two then Malagai or Torn, whichever you pronounce it, however you pronounce it. 
This is a, a type of teak and an Italian fruit tree. Oh, Quila and Torn were the two names you gave me. I don't know what they're like. Quila is a type of... Quila is marabou. It's, it's, it's a type of, um, of teak. Yeah. And the, the Torn is a, an Italian fruit tree, according okay. to to uh, wikipedia so uh, so i don't know we'll uh, see if i can find out a bit more yeah. about it <laughs> yeah but see, it looks it's quite it's very heavy i say quite heavy it's very heavy this this lump very you know, dense four by four bit about what 450 mil long so 100 by 100 450 mil long um and it's a dense lump of timber so and it takes the edge off of, oh, it, it totally buggers up to bandsaw blades I got through four processing that lot. Grief. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Anyway, look forward to that next week. And um, thank you all very much for coming along. I look forward to seeing some pictures of, uh, of, of what you get, what you make. I'll yes, if anyone more wants to more. post a picture of their, uh, their replication or how their Can interpretation of it. Yeah, Gerard did last time when he did the uh, the candlestick. Mm -hmm. um, he, he sent oh, pictures of a couple of them. He made he made more than one, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I, I was delightful. And you could see the progress, the progression through. You know, the improvement in the second one for, over the first one, because it, it's all about practice, isn't it? It is practice, and that's what mm. we all need, and that's what we all need, particularly the <laughs> beginners that think they're advanced. It's not until they get a major catch or an accident that they realise they're not as advanced as what they were well, that's thinking right, they a, were. There's a knack to avoiding catches, to be honest. And you yeah. pick that up with time, don't you? And it is time that teaches you. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. Andy and I have both been turning somewhere in the region of 30 odd years. So we can say that with a little bit of authority. Yeah. Yeah. It, it helps. It helps to have done a bit. Yep. Mm. <laughs> no, no doubt about it. Good. Okay. Well, let's call that it. That's just over the hour. That's pretty mm -hmm. good. Not bad at all. And thank you very much for coming along. And Thanks, guys. Seeing, seeing you next Tuesday. Yes. Bye for now. Excellent. Bye. Here we go. Press the button.